Gummer's Howl turned out to be the first of three walks we did on this day. It's a very simple up and down in which you park in the nearby Gummer's Howl car park, walk over the road and take the leisurely stroll up to the top and the trig pillar. After a look round admiring the views of Windermere, we merely walk back down by the same path. Wainwright describes Gummer's Howe as a fell walk in miniature. A little beauty with heather, a few rocks to scramble on, a classic view and a rustic ordnance column. He continues by saying that if ancient legs can no longer climb it, know ye that the sad time has come to hang up the boots forever and take to slippers. Dave and I both agreed that in future, at least once a year, we now have to climb Gunners Howe to assure ourselves that we are many years away from having to hang up our boots. Our second walk of the day starts down the road a mile and a quarter from Gummer's Howe car park at Staveley in Cartmel. We park the car near a phone kiosk and turn left into a lane which soon leads to open fell land. After a while the path essentially disappears as we make our way over difficult forestry commission scrubland to AW's so called first cairn on an area called Swainson. We then carry on through thick bracken to the top and cairn of Staveley Fell. Dropping down again over difficult ground, we turn south along a forestry commission track and after half a mile we turn east to visit Simpson Ground Reservoir. We then walk through some lovely woods alongside Raven Scar, eventually returning to the path and walk back to the car.
Wainwright states that Staveley Fell is an adopted name for the high ground overlooking Staveley in Furness. Now this may be an error as the Ordnance Survey maps show the area as being Staveley in Cartmel. Wainwright is absolutely spot on however when he gives us warning that his route takes us over difficult forestry commission land. There are obstacles to progress over in the form of thick bracken, rough deep heather and we would add lots of decaying cut wood from trees. So we definitely agree with Wainwright's assessment that unless you can bend your legs in all directions, Staverley Fell may not be for you. However, as is always the case, if you can do it, the views are well worth it. It was now time for us to turn off towards the reservoir as I had made a promise to a certain young lady and my bluff was being called. Yes folks, I was going in.
please don't tell Anne because you'll get me doing it again but I really enjoyed that I was very pleased with the pictures of this forest, but believe me, it has to be seen with the eyes. Really quite fantastic. That was it for Staverley Fell, hope you enjoyed it. Sadly, we had to say goodbye to Anne and Claire, they needed to be somewhere else, but we wanted to get one more fell in before we drove home the next morning. Our third and final walk of the day starts from Cartmel Parish Hall, and we make our way up the short path to the Monument Cairn on Raven's Barrow. As Wainwright has suggested it in his guide, we take some time out to visit Height's Cottage and the two artificial tarns near Sohow Farm before returning via St Anthony's Church back to the car. Wainwright says, though the walk is short and confined to a single walled enclosure, it was too good to be admitted from the guide. So despite having done two walks already with two lovely ladies, we had just enough energy left and was looking forward to what laid ahead. highest point just a few metres away on such a lovely evening we soaked up the wonderful views and then made our way as Wainwright suggests to Heights Cottage and the artificial tarns. This was very pleasant indeed and only spoilt by a farmer who clearly needs to sow more oats if you know what I mean. Wainwright states that much of the land is privately owned and the farmer was most insistent we stick to the footpaths, not that we had any choice.
Returning via the church to the car, we noticed a lady trying to get through thick bracken opposite the hall, being forced back at every turn. It turned out her mother in her late 80s, who was in the car with her, had told her of a slide she used to play on as a child, made from the rock in the hill. Dave and I found it, cut a path through the bracken, and a childhood memory was relived. That was Cartmel Fell. Before making for the pub, we visited a river with a fish pass near our digs, and we thought we'd include some highlights in this video. Pub, Dave was spotted by one of his loyal video viewing fans. This is James Moran on the right and his mate Joe. Jim is now the proud owner of a Fat Boys on Tour fan show. Thank you once again for viewing our videos. It's really appreciated. We'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and hope that we all have a very peaceful 2018. You never know, we may see you out there. Cheers. Cheers.